like for instance like there's some days i just go out in my sweatpants you know what i mean like i go out and it's like i used to live in skinny jeans and you know what i mean it's like i guess you live the gimmick at one point you know what i mean like i i looked like that dude 24 hours a day at one point hi my name is ali and i'm joined by electric centuries mikey way for the latest in enemies in conversation series mikey how are you doing today hey everybody how's it going doing well doing really well yeah how how are things how is everything things are really great i mean i feel like um like a lot of people you know the world's kind of in this mysterious spot you know um there's more questions than that than answers for everyone and we're all kind of just in the same boat you know i just I, i feel like i feel like everyone's on equal playing field right now you know what i mean it's like no one's doing better or worse than anyone else, you know, because yeah. mentally, you know, everyone's in the same spot. <laughs> yeah. It's a weird thing. Where everyone's, really, everyone's just kind of going, yeah, I'm, I'm exactly the same as you. <laughs> yeah. I kind of like, um, I mean, one cool thing about this, uh, this period of time is like, I think people are kind of recognizing that they're not all right. You know what I mean? Instead of like, they're like leaning into it, you know what I mean? And it's like, I'm, I'm, I'm having friends reach out to me and opening up about how they're feeling, which some of them have been like, you know, kind of some people are closed off about their feelings. And I think this this period of time is making everyone kind of open up about their feelings. Yeah, so it's definitely. probably it's a it's a very introspective time, but then it becomes you want to share it with people you love. So I, I think that that's one positive that came from this, I think. Definitely. Because it's been what almost four years since the last Electric Century album. It's been a long time. Yeah. I mean it's it's strange it's like i never well i won't say never at when i when i first started the project i kind of wanted it to be my full time you know my band you know i wanted it to be my thing but then just as the first album was coming out i uh, i went into rehab and it's it's funny you think one thing going in and your your frame of mind changes when you leave like i didn't want to tour when i got out um touring was the last thing I wanted to do at the time. I just, I wanted to get mentally clear. I wanted to be the best version of me that I could be. And I felt like at the time touring may have taken a toll on me or been a negative and I didn't want anything to be a negative. So I kind of, I made it kind of a, it's a passion project, you know, it's, it's, it's a hobby. It's a fun project with one of my best friends. That's, that's kind of what I, I look at it as, um, you know, it's, it's, it's a type of music that I've always wanted to explore. Wouldn't have worked for, for the other band I'm in, you know, like the, this world wouldn't, wouldn't work with that world. And it's like, um, you know, I always kind of wanted to, to see what it would be like if, if, if I went for something like that, you know what I mean? Like, like a, like I've always been a fan of new wave, um, particularly British new wave was always my favorite, you know what I mean? And, uh, the genre, like fr- from an early age, it always kind of struck me and it carried on into my teens, into my twenties, into my thirties. I'm, I'm 40 and I'm still, you know, I had soft sell on last night. You know what I mean? I'm still like, I'm still weighing it with the genre, but um, yeah, it's something I've, I've always wanted to kind of explore. Yeah. I mean, so what was the, what was the spark of inspiration that kind of made you want to start creating the second Electric Century record? The second, it was, it was basically, we had, we had some demos left over from for the night to control that I was kind of like, man, these songs are so good. Like I want to do something with them. Do I want to make another album? I don't know. What, what are we going to do if we make another album? Like, what does it become? And what's interesting is um, around the time when I was like, oh, I don't feel like touring on electric century, but I still want to do it. I had kind of this sliver of an idea in my head where I was like, I was like, oh, I could kind of like, I, I you know, Damon Albarn is one of my heroes and I, and I always loved what he did musically, but as far as conceptually, the gorillas was brilliant. You know, he, in the beginning, it was very much, they were, they were a cartoon band. They played behind screens. They were in it. That that was, that was the thing. And it was like, they, they morphed later into, you know, this big ensemble musical experience. Um, But it's Genesis was screens, cartoons, you know what I mean? like a different attitude from the band he was in, you know, that he was known most for. Um, so I kind of was always like, man, it'd be cool if, if, if we kind of took a page from them and and made Electric Century kind of something like that. 
Because to me, I was like, you know, we're not going to tour on this. We're not going to play. Sh- yeah, at the time, I was like, I'm not never going to play a show, but we're not going to make this like we're going to release singles and tour and singles and tour. Like it was never going to be that. So I was like, well, you got to be creative with it then, which is why I kind of tried to do things a little left to center with this project. Like if you remember for the night to control, we gave it away with with uh, with a magazine, one of your competitors. <laughs> we we gave we gave the album away because I wanted people to have the fixation of a physical CD. Like you had to listen to it. At one point it was the only way you could listen to it. And I was like, I want people to get a CD player. You don't have one. You got to go find one. You know what I mean? (laughs) Kind of, it's strange. It's a dead technology now, but I wanted people to get the CD. I wanted people to be excited about like when we were, when we were teenagers, um, you know, I can't wait for this date because this album's coming out and I got to wait outside when the store opens, I'm going to go and get it. Like that's gone. You know, Friday morning, you wake up, refresh your Spotify and it's there. You know what I mean? It's like the thrill of the chase is gone. So I was just trying to to have a little fun with it. You know what I mean? Along those lines, it was like when, when the thought of a second electric century album came about, it, there was like this serendipity moment where the fine folks at Z2 reached out to me and I had a meeting with, with a bunch of them on the phone and, and, one of the owners, Josh was like, Hey, you know what? I kind of see this project as, and it was like a strange thing where he like pulled the thought out of my brain without me ever telling anybody. <laughs> it was like, this is kind of like a gorillas thing. And I was like, I had that moment where the hallway gets really long and I'm like, that's what I always wanted. But I've never, I told, I told Dave maybe once or twice, but we never like dug deeper, tried to figure it out. You know what I mean? So it was just like one of those things where I put a pin in it. My brain never thought about it, but yeah, Z2 reached out. They were like, you want to do a graphic novel? I was like, probably. I was like, let's talk about it. And then, and then by the end of the conversation, I was just like, this is what we have to do. You know what I mean? It was like, it was, it was one of those moments, you know, like a Eureka. I was like, these songs are very, these songs, well, we weren't done with all of them, but we had a chunk of them done. And we were like, it's very, you know, cinematic. They tell a story you can get themes from them. And I kind of like slowly started piecing together a narrative from, from different track listings that I had made, you know what I mean? Yeah. But no, we didn't, we didn't have it all done when the graphic novel began. There was like maybe half of it was done tonally. They all fit with the graphic novel. You know, it's, it's one of those things like it just kind of, some, some of it was a happy accident. Some of it was engineered. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, definitely. I mean, so how long have you been sat on this record for? 2017 we had some started it 2018 we did a lot of it 2019 we did more of it you know like we we finished two songs maybe like a couple months ago you know what i mean like this has been this has been uh this has been one that's simmering you know like um the song have you heard the record yet yeah the song alive was when i was in rehab dave came to visit me and he brought uh he he had put it on like a like a tape, like a cassette tape. And he did an acoustic demo on a cassette tape and they let me keep it. And I remember they let me listen to this cassette tape that Dave brought. And it was like, I listened to it over and over. And it's just like that song. I was like, Dave, this is one of the best songs you've ever written. Like we have to record this one as soon as humanly possible. So yeah, that's what I remember. That's what I remember particularly about that song, but a song uh, voices was one that we cut off of the last album. Okay. And we re-recorded it. And it sounds newer to me than, than the version that we had done. Definitely. So this, this new record, like sonically, it sounds similar to the the first record, you know, just a little bit bigger, but kind of lyrically, what did you kind of want to say with this record? We, um, we, we kind of wanted to uh, make it like, all right, you're, you're seeing, this is the picture, the second album, we wanted it to be widescreen. You know what I mean? It was like, just a higher definition. I mean, what we're trying to say is it speaks a lot about mental health album, you know, uh, me and Dave, it's a big subject for both of us, you know, like we've, we've both been going to therapy most of our lives. Um, you know, we're just, it's the way we're both wired where that speaks to us, you know, like for me personally, talk therapy, like it's, it's almost necessary for me. I've gone through periods of time when, when I didn't go and I just know I never, I never feel as good as when I'm going, you know? So yeah, the, the lyrics speak to uh, a lot. There's a lot of, a lot of 
themes of redemption and it being okay to not be okay. You know yeah. what I mean? That's, that's kind of, that's kind of the mantra of the whole thing. You know, it's kind of like, it's, it's fine if you're sad, you know, I, I think at some age, maybe my mid twenties, I, I kind of was like, you thought there was maybe something wrong with you that you were sad. You're sad frequently. But then at some point in my thirties, I was like, that's just how everybody is, but not everybody talks about it. I think it's just human to not be happy all the time because you shouldn't be, you know what I mean? And if for me personally, taking something that made, made me happy all the time, it took away some of the stuff I loved about myself. You know what I mean? Like when I was on antidepressants in my twenties, you know, it's like, you look back at it now and you're like, you know, like I, I want the highs and lows, you know what I mean? That's just me personally though. I, I, I wanted, I wanted to feel that at some point, you know what I mean? Yeah, definitely. Because the track, I think, Free to Be Okay, that mm-hmm. feels like an important track on the record. Like the lyrics, yeah. uh, I'm not a fucked up hopeless burden. I'm not the pain yeah. I'm living in. Like, you know, that's a pretty frank track about, you know, not it's being... about mental health. It's about, um, I mean, yeah, he talks about medication in that one. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah, that's, like I said, it's like, you're free to be okay. You know what I mean? Like you're given permission to be, everyone's given permission to be okay. And it's like, that's kind of like, we're reminding everyone, mm-hmm. Hey, it's, it's, you can be okay if you want, you know what I mean? It's, it's cool. It's fine to be okay. But yeah, that's, that's, that's a recurring through the roller coaster of the album. You'll, you'll notice that in there a lot. Yeah. Cause I know that like the accompanying graphic novel kind of deals with addiction. Your oh, yeah. series collapse kind of tackles mental health. Obviously this mm-hmm. record sort of tackles that. Do you think it's important that kind of you always say something with your art? I think so. I think not only do I like to make something that either sounds or looks cool, but I want, I wanted to hit you emotionally, you know, like I, I feel like I did that with my band and I feel like I did that with collapser. You know, I feel like, I want people to feel something when they, they listen to or read it. You know what I mean? So that's, that, that's just the way I like to do it. You know what I mean? Like, I, I feel like, I feel like if you can just make somebody feel better, you know what I mean? Make somebody not feel like they're alone. You know what I mean? Because with, with subjects like this, it's like, it's, it's very easy to feel like you're, you're different, defective, not good enough. And it's like, I want people to know that's not the case. You know what I mean? Because I, as a teenager in my twenties and some of my thirties, like I felt that, you know what I mean? And it never went away for a long time. And it's like, I just want people to know there's a light at the end of the tunnel and you know, it's stuff, stuff that hurts in the moment. You know, you'll look back in a couple of years and be like, you know, you won't even remember some of it. And that's hard to, that's hard to even you know, realize when you're in it, you know what I mean? Even right now we're in this pandemic in, in four years. I mean, we're all really going to remember this for decades, and decades, probably till we all die, but we're going to be like, dude, remember when we were all home? You know what I mean? Like, remember, like we all got to hang out all the time. You know what I mean? Like it's fleeting. It's all fleeting. And, and it's, it's easy to lose sight of that. I lose sight of it all the time. You know what I mean? Yeah, definitely. Cause like you touched on this, but you know, that first electric century album, you know, you just kind of, you know, dealing with the breakup of MCR and like yeah. all the pressures that came with that, you know, yeah. going to rehab. I mean, what did releasing that album kind of mean to you? It, it was a, it was a big step for me because I had never done anything. I had never done anything. I mean, I didn't do that by myself, but it was, you know, when you do something, you get really good at it and you're comfortable. You know what I mean? Like with My Chemical Romance, we got really good at it and, and we were very comfortable. So doing something out of your comfort zone, it yields something great most of the time. You know what I mean? Like when, when you're out of your realm is when you could surprise yourself and that's, that's fulfilling. And I felt like with, for the night to control, I surprised myself. You know what I mean? I feel like it succeeded, you know, and, and as crazy as all the stuff I did with that album, like I made it so difficult to consume that album. You know what I mean? Like, but no, we did great stuff. Like, you know, like, uh, AP gave it away with Amazon then Karan gave it away with their magazine. And we made a vinyl and we were like, no, you got to buy the vinyl. You know what I mean? You can only buy the vinyl for a long time. So <laughs> first you can only have the CD. And then it was like, all right. Uh, it was like AP put it out digitally for like a brief time. Then it was gone. And then it was like, now you have to own it on vinyl. You know what I mean? It was like, it reminds me of, I think when I was like 17, when OK Computer came out, they had sent out tapes 
in a cassette player to radio stations. Actually, a friend of mine, Phil Costello, was who who came up with that idea. He worked for radio. He worked with Radiohead in, in the radio department. And he was like, "God, listen to this album front to back." I'm gonna put it in. I'm gonna put it in this tape deck, and we're gonna solder it shut. And <laughs> you got it. <laughs> that's the only way. You could. There's no rewind. There's no fast forward or whatever it was. But yeah, I, I I wanted people to go on a similar experience with with for the night to control. I mean, yeah, for the night to control. Yeah. Um, and obviously this this new record, um, Ray Toro kind of produced it. I mean, what yeah. was it like kind of work with him again? It was super great. I mean, he's one of my best friends in the entire world, and we we share we love a lot of the same things, you know what I mean? So it's like, and, and and we also, we have kind of this sixth sense where it's like working for so long, being on the road for so long, just being around each other so long that we, we speak this, this other language where it's like, um, sometimes I'm thinking something, we give each other a look, you know what I mean? He just knows what I'm talking about or a smirk or something, you know what I mean? We make sound effects. Like he knows what I'm talking about that maybe someone else wouldn't because of just how long we were, just together, you know what I mean? And just, we just have, a, we have a thick bond, you know what I mean? So it was fun to be able to work with him again on something. Uh, and I think he, I think he slayed, you know what I mean? I think every time he would send me a track, I'd be like, are you kidding me too? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Not that I didn't think it was going to be great, but it's like, I tried to have no expectations, you know what I mean? And then you, you listen and you're just like, wow, you know what I mean? Like every time he sent me a song, I was just, I was blown, blown, you know, like the Max L ad. Yeah. <laughs> he he max yeah, out of me considering kind of what you know what the record talks about what this band kind of means to you was it important having someone like that you know that you get you had sort of total trust in to kind of work with on it what's funny is everyone that works on this project they're all they're all some of my best friends you know sean simon um he was in uh frank Aero's first band well not his first frank was in a lot of bands but he was in a, a band called pensy prep who was instrumental in my chemical romance. Uh, you know, they got us all our Jersey shows and they threw us on all their VFW hall shows, but Sean was the keyboard player. And we, we got along right away. We became fast friends, but he later came on the road and he sold merch for my chemical romance up to our first, first time we went to the UK. He was, that was his last time selling merch for us. So I think it was the Astoria maybe. Sure. Yeah. He came on that trip and I think that was his last trip over. So if if you went to the Astoria show that we played, like Sean Simon sold you t-shirts, you know what I mean? Like he he was with us. We had a little briefcase, I remember, with a lock on it that Frank, I think Frank, it was Frank's. But yeah, he would open it up and had the shirts on it. Yeah, but you know, one of my best friends in the world, we always shared a love for comic books and and whatnot. And you know, when when I was going to do Collapso, like DC was like, oh, you should do, you should do this as a co-write with someone so that they could teach you the ropes. And immediately I was like, Sean Simon, I called him. I'm like, you down? And he's like, yes. And, you know, we kind of did that. But when, when this came about, I was so busy with, with MCR and, and other things, you know, like fatherhood and stuff that I was like, I want, you know, not only that, I was like, I want Sean to co-write this with me because I know it'll be really great. You know what I mean? Yeah, definitely. And uh, again, knocked it out of the park. He would send me chunks of pages and they're just, so, so across the board, it was kind of one of those things where I was just blown away over and over again by everyone, you know, everyone involved. Yeah. And yeah, Dave Dibiak, I've known him for 20 years, you know, one of my best friends in the world. I was, he was a label mate of mine on eyeball when the first My Chemical Romance was on uh, eyeball records and he was in a band, they were called Sleep Station. And I was a big fan. I was like, this sounds like a lot of the stuff I love. And, you know, I'd seen all, he had all these albums out. I was like, he's really prolific. He writes a lot of, I, I knew his output was great. And I became friends with his brother, Mark, and um, introduced me to him. And then, you know, we would hang out, talk about music. But like, I was like, man, I loved his voice. I was like, one day I would love to, I kind of wanted to do like a Brit like a British rock album with him. You know what I mean? I wanted to do something kind of like radio headish. That was my first, my first thought when I heard him is I was like, Oh man, this would be a killer radio head type thing. And it kind of morphed into the faster driving stuff. You know what I mean? But yeah. So three of my best friends are on the project. Cause yeah, like you were going to be spending a bulk of last year on the road, obviously, mm -hmm. with them. you know what? And obviously that didn't happen for obvious reasons. I mean, what did you kind of do with all that free time? 
fatherhood. You know what I mean? It's like I got, I got, I got two, <laughs> Free two time. yeah, yeah. I got two, two magical little girls, you know, one, one's almost four, one's almost two. And it's like your, your world revolves around them and it should, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So it's been great because I wasn't supposed to get that time. Yeah. You know, I would have missed, I would have missed a lot of months of last year and I would have missed a lot of milestones. I mean, I may have missed Kennedy walk, you know what I mean? And got to see it all and I get to keep seeing it all. Um, that was really great. You know, getting to spend time with family is, has been really awesome. And then getting to, you know, there's, there's all these awesome ways to keep in touch with people. Like right now we're zooming, you know what I mean? And it's like, nobody really thought of these things until the, you know, like people don't go to work anymore. They zoom, you know what I mean? And it's like, everybody got caught with, you know, everybody hit the brakes, like the world hit the brakes. We all jumped forward. And it was like, so I feel like, like I said earlier, it's like a real, like a reconnection. Everybody's reconnecting with people. You know what I mean? No, but yeah, it's a little too early to talk about some of the, the other stuff I have going on. There's some music, there's some comics, but yeah, mostly fatherhood, family, just enjoying this time. You know what I mean? Yeah. Cause like, you know, you mentioned you're a dad, you know, you're a successful comic book author, uh, author, considering how mentally draining you found things sort of towards the end of my chem. Why did you sort of, why do you keep coming back to music? What is it kind of? I, I can't not, you know what I mean? That's my favorite. You know what I mean? Like I can't, I'll always make music till, till I can't, till it's the end, till it's the end, I'll make music. You know what I mean? It's just, I'm, I'm one of those people that when I'm not creating, I start to careen downhill. You know what I mean? I always have to create, um, I had, I had recognized that about myself early on, you know, it's like gotta be making something. You gotta be moving, moving towards something, working towards something. That's when I'm my happiest, you know what I mean? So it's like, that's what I just keep doing. You know, I, I try to keep, I try to keep four projects at least simmering. And then maybe like one of them will happen. You know what I mean? It's like, gotta kind of just keep creating. Amazing. I mean, what do you want this chapter of electric century to mean to people? I want them to kind of take, I want to just deliver people a burst of some kind of positivity or positive message right now in this, in this climate, you know, like to someone, this might be what gets them through a part of this, any kind of aspect of this. If I can at least do that now, that's, that's kind of what this became, you know, this became, I want to be someone's safety blanket. You know, if this makes them feel better for even an hour, like that's super cool. And I did my job, you know, I kind of want, that's what I want people to take from this, but I also want them to, have fun. You know, this is a fun science fiction, horror, like whatever you really want to call it. Like I want you to just let go and escape with it for a little bit and forget, forget all your worries or troubles for a little bit. Yeah. Cause it's like, you know, Poppy, Youngblood, Andy Beersack, Electric Century, like mm-hmm. so many artists are kind of releasing graphic novels alongside records at the moment. Yeah. Z2 Why- is killing it. They're killing it. Um, It's funny. Like, I'll always hear like rumblings of what they got going on. And then like, you know, I'll refresh my Instagram and it's like, boom. And you're like, they got them. You know what I mean? It's like Elvis Presley, the doors, Cypress Hill, you know, it's just like, it goes on and on and on. You know, David Bowie's son is releasing um, a graphic novel. Um, Yeah. Every day there's something. And, And, you know, I've heard rumblings of what's coming down the pike and it's all super exciting. You know what I mean? Like they have people, I mean, the, the comic book music link has been there for a long time, you know, like in the seventies kiss were living comic book characters, but like they, they released a bunch of comics in the seventies with Marvel. I remember, but people have always dipped their toe in, you know what I mean? And I feel like at some point it became more of a no brainer. You know, you also notice at comic con, the, the presence of music is creeping in, you know what I mean? The, the marriage was there, but people didn't know about it. You know, most, most musicians I know love comic books, you know? That's it's, you know, it's, it's something that to some people like compliments, you know, like some people listen to music while they read comic books, you know what I mean? It's like, they've always been kind of connected, you know? Yeah. And you're contributing a story to Anthrax's upcoming graphic novel. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah we're, we're really excited. I mean, um, I've told the story a million times, but when, when me and my brother were, were kids, we would watch Headbangers Ball every Saturday. Um, I don't know. Did they get, did you guys get that in the UK headbangers ball MTV? I've heard of it. So I assume so. It was a big like metal, like they played Iron Maiden, Metallica, Guns N' Roses, you know, stuff like that. But it was, it was, you know, that in 120, 120 minutes were, that was everything us as kids, but headbangers ball was the metal side of things. And 
Um, it's where, you know, we, we were first exposed to Anthrax, the band, um, you know, their imagery. We love the songs, but like they were one of the first bands that were, were like, hey, we like comics. You know, I know Danzig was always like a big, a big supporter of comics back then. Remember, he always liked him in the Wolverine T-shirts and he loved it, too. But I, I know Anthrax did the Judge Dredd and like the, all their all their merch had them as comic book characters and their videos were very comic booky. So as a kid, when that stuff wasn't cool, you're watching these people on TV that are like, no, this is cool. You know what I mean? So it was like Anthrax made that cool initially. You know what I mean? So it was, it, it's not only are we huge fans, but it's like you got to pay it forward. You know, like they, they were the they were the original torchbearers of the whole thing. So it's I'm glad they have a comic book because they should. You know what I mean? Like I remember like the not man, the. The, the logo, like I was just fascinated. I used to draw it on <laughs> my notebook as a kid, but yeah, really pleased to be a part of it. It's an honor. It must be cool to also write a story with your brother. I think that's... We've never done that. We, ne- we never wrote a comic. So, I mean, we've, we've talked about stories that each of us have done, you know what I mean? But not like, all right, me and you were doing this, you know? So that's also exciting where it's like, get to create a comic story with them. Yeah. So I guess you just need a collaboration with Frank now for kind of the full set. Gotta, I got to finish. The circle needs to be closed. Yeah. <laughs> I'll call him up when this is done. <laughs> what, what can we what do? Are you doing? <laughs> yeah. What are you doing? Yeah. Cause That's it feels like, it feels like some of like the biggest TV shows around right now are kind of based on comic books, you know, they're all comic books. Yeah. Yeah. Umbrella Academy. I mean, would you want to turn, you know, Collapser or the graphic novel into a TV show? I would love that. You know, I think they both serve well as, as live action, you know what I mean? I know that the thing is there's so much that there's, there's so much content now that it's like, now people are kind of getting choosy again. You know what I mean? There was, there was a point where everything was getting made into something, you know what I mean? It's like, it's kind of slowed down a bit, but yeah, if the opportunity arose, I would love that. I think, I think they both, you know, collapse was kind of that coming of age superhero thing that like, I, I see that a lot in movies, you know what I mean? The come, you know, younger kid gets powers and they're like, Whoa, you know, <laughs> it's that type of thing. But this is, this is more of, yeah, this electric century kind of feels like if, if like, if I had to put it like a comparison, it's kind of like, you know, like one of those labyrinth wizard of Oz type deals, you know what I mean? Those were always, that's one of my favorite genre, you know what I mean? Going to a, going to a mysterious land with mysterious creatures, you know what I mean? Like that's, that's kind of what I, what I uh, sought out to do with it. Amazing. And I guess lastly, like, you know, growing up, you were a kid who loved comic books and music. Considering like everything you've achieved, do you feel like you got anything left to prove? I don't. I've never been asked that, but I don't feel like <laughs> I have anything to prove anymore. It's funny, man. Like, like for instance, like there's some days I just go out in my sweatpants. You know what I mean? Like I go out and it's like, I used to live in skinny jeans and, you know what I mean? It's like, I guess you live the gimmick at one point. You know what I mean? Like I, I looked like that dude 24 hours a day at one point. And then as you get older, like you kind of take solace in, in being comfortable. You know what I mean? Like, I don't have anything to prove it. Like, I don't got to look cool. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> that's, I've never been asked that either. Do I have anything to prove? No, I don't. But um, I feel like, I don't know. I'm not patting myself on the back. I feel like, I feel like I've succeeded in what, in what I, what I came to do. And now everything is kind of, everything's just for fun now. You know what I mean? I'm able to do things for fun. You know what I mean? Which the, my, my, my career, my chemical romance is, you know, I've been, I've been fortunate enough to be given that, you know what I mean? And, and that's humbling, you know what I mean? To be able to just make what you want and not worry about like, Oh, like I, I, I this has to succeed or else, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm just doing stuff for, for the love of it now, you know what I mean? Yeah, because I mean, listening to this record, like it does feel like you've still got, you've still got stuff to say. Like, it's not like- I think I'll always have stuff to say, you know what I mean? I think everyone does. I think maybe they don't know it, you know what I mean? I think everyone has something to say, but I'll always have something to say. And I know this, I mean, I want to keep making comics, music, you know, I'm I'm going to keep going. You know what I mean? I got, I got more stuff on the burner um, that I know people will be excited about. Uh, you know, you get that in like even with Electric Century, like for a long time I couldn't talk about I was doing it. You know what I mean? That's kind of where I'm at now, where I'm like, I have a bunch of stuff where I'm like, <laughs> I can't talk about it, but it's coming and it's cool. 
but yeah so just yeah stay tuned we got more coming you know amazing well i'll let you get on but thank you so much for your time thank um, you for having me this was fantastic look after yourself and stay safe okay you too all right bye-bye